Hi, my name is Riley Breckenridge, and I am the drummer for the band Thrice. And I'm here to talk about my favorite record of all time, and it is Cave In's Jupiter. Um, I think I picked this up based on, uh, I mean, a recommendation from Brian McTurnan, who recorded The Illusion of Safety, which is our second full length, and The Artist in the Ambulance. Um, he had worked with Cave In in the past on. Uh, on this record and then a little bit on Beyond Hypothermia, I think, which was their first record. Um, so he introduced me to the band and uh, from the get-go I was into them. They were doing a bit of a more metal-inspired thing early on. and um, But I listened to this record and it was a huge stylistic change for them and definitely not what I expected. And it caught me a little bit off guard at first and it took repeated listens for me to really get it but once it clicked it clicked and it just has become this earworm that's stayed in my head for I guess it came out in 2000 so 16 years um, it's timeless I mean I, I go back and listen to it several times a year um, regardless of what I'm listening to like I listen to a ton of heavy stuff a ton of really mellow ambient stuff but this record always finds its way back into my, uh, my rotation. Um, I'm really inspired by the drumming on this record. J.R. Connors is one of my favorite drummers on the planet. And um, this record in particular, the way, the parts that he came up with, the way he plays them, the dynamics he uses, um, were really inspiring to me. And then uh, we ended up touring with them in the States in 2001 on the Take Action Plea for Peace tour. And that was with them, Hot Water Music, Alkaline Trio, uh, Selby Tigers, and a few other bands. Um, but it was right after Jupiter had come out. And I feel like the band was at their peak as far as like live performances go. It was bef before they had kind of got mixed up in the major label thing that eventually kind of derailed them in some ways, I think. but. Um, they were at the top of their game musically, just an incredible live band. And we had only been touring for a couple years and we were still young and um, very impressionable. So to be able to see them perform at that level, um, it kind of set a bar for us. You know, Not that we could ever reach that, but it was something to, to strive for. Um, just watching them on stage every night, absolutely killing it, um, playing incredible songs, and uh, you know, it made me in particular, I was just like, holy shit, I need to step my game up if this is going to be something that I do for a long time. Um, and just getting to know those guys and to talk to them about technique and songwriting and you know, their recording experiences and their gear and all that stuff. Um, I think across the board, uh, not just me, but for the rest of the guys in the band, we learned so much by watching them and being able to pick their brains a little bit about how they do what they do and why they do what they do. Um, um, and beyond it being inspiring musically uh, and sonically, it was inspiring from kind of an ethos, band ethos standpoint, where there shouldn't be any rules when you're creating music and it was such a huge stylistic jump for this band uh, but it was what they wanted to do it was what was in their hearts and uh, it was the music they wanted to play and um, I think that proved to us that you know we should be able to do what we want to too um, you don't have to make the same record over and over and over and over uh, it's okay to take chances it's okay to trust your gut and uh, make the music you want to make and play and um, yeah I think them along with Radiohead kind of inspired us to do what we wanted to when we wanted to um, and if it was in our hearts then you know that's that's the best we can do at the time you know um, so yeah just across the board musically uh, tones, technique, uh, just the thought process behind the record. Um, it's been so inspiring and it's 
a record that I still listen to very often. And I think I'll be listening to it for the rest of my life. And I got a, I got a one-year-old kid at home, and I've already played the record for him a few times. So uh, it's, it's influencing across generations. My favorite song on this record is Big Riff. Um, I think it's the third song. No, yes. I should know, but um, <laughs> it's just so heavy. It's crushing. Uh, it's dynamic. Um, it's kind of the song, if somebody was like, what does Caven sound like? I would give that to them because it's a little bit of the, the heavier stuff that they were doing early on. It's spacey. It's got great dynamics. And uh, it's just an incredible song. And uh, one that I listen to for inspiration all the time. You know, if I'm going to pick one track off of this record to listen to, that's the one I go for. I think it's, I think White Silence is, is different, but there are songs on there, like Sing My Loves is one of the most epic cave in songs they've ever written. Um, but yeah, I, I, don't, I wouldn't say that it's worse than this, it's just different. Um, if I had to rank all of the cave in records, I think that would probably be number two or number three. Um, and then Until Your Heart Stops would be in there somewhere. They have so many good records. <laughs> I wish they were making records still. But I'll take uh, I'll take Mutoid Man when I can get it, and uh, I'll take Old Man Gloom as well. And then I guess they, uh, Adam and Jr. have a new project called Nomad Stones, which is like a little bit more punk rock kind of stuff, which is also cool. I don't remember the exact day or what I was doing, but I'm almost positive that I bought it at Green Records. Um, which is a, a record store, little record store back home that Dustin used to work at. And then the, I guess the co-owners of the shop or maybe one of the owners and one of the workers started a label, uh, Green Flag Records, who ended up putting out uh, Identity Crisis before we were on Subsidy Hopeless. So that record, well, that record store played a very important part in the, the growth of Price in many ways, you know, supplying us with music and then you know, being willing to put out our, our first crappy <laughs> LP. <laughs> I do collect vinyl. I will admit that I do not have a great uh, listening setup. That's one of my goals is to get a really good record player and really good speakers. Um, but it hasn't, it hasn't happened yet. It's in progress. Um, but I do have a lot of my favorite records on vinyl, um, if I can find them. <laughs> um, but most of my listening now is digitally, just because it's easy. But um, once my kid grows up a little bit, um, I'm going to have a really good time sharing music with him in a physical format, instead of just pushing play on an iPod or iPhone or whatever. Because um, that was a huge thing for me when I was a kid. Uh, my dad had a huge jazz collection and classic rock stuff, and I remember sitting on the floor in the living room holding a physical copy of a record and you know reading all about stuff in the liner notes. And, uh, I think that's important, and it's kind of gotten lost a little bit in this generation. You know, technology is great, but so uh, so are tangible products. Um, yes, I did see them live. Uh, we played Wrecking Ball Festival last year in Atlanta, and they played. And I think that, I mean, it was still awesome, <laughs> but I think it had been a while since they had played together. I mean, obviously it had, it had been a while, but um, like I said, like 2001 was like the peak, I feel like. They were touring their asses off and just, they were just so tight. Um, but this one, I mean, it was a one-off show and they were having fun and they had uh, Ben and Nick from Mutoid Man come and sit in and play on Big Riff while JR and uh, Caleb just kind of hung out and watched, which was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're good whenever, wherever, however. And then the stuff that Steve's doing with Mutoid Man, I saw them live at Wrecking Ball as well. Freaking blew my mind. It's, they, they are having so much fun playing, and they're so tight, 
and they're shredding so hard. Um, but you can tell that they don't take themselves too seriously. They're not like the you know, brute metal band. Um, so uh, it's really it's a really great show. My name is Jordan, and I'm in a band called La Dispute, and I'm holding uh, a copy of one of my favorite records. It's called The Sun That Never Sets by one of my favorite bands, Neurosis. Hi, my name is Ricky Mazada. I play drums in the band Me Without You, and today I chose Smashing Pumpkins, Siamese Dream, as my favorite record of all time. What's going on? I'm, I'm uh, Brandon Beaver. I play guitar for Me Without You. I chose this beautiful man, Peter Gabriel, and the album So is my favorite record of all time.